so in the last lecture we uh, we were trying to design a beam uh, uh design a column meaning that uh, we did not know the section so we knew the loading we knew the support conditions and uh, thereby we knew the effective length and we wanted to come up with a section that can resist this load so to do so we started with the slenderness ratio assumption of a slenderness ratio we said that you know if it's an i section we can assume the slenderness ratio to be somewhere between 80 and 150 so 100 seemed to be a good number to start with we started with 100 then we found out uh, the radius of radii of gyration about the z axis and the y axis so we got two numbers then we went to the steel table and then we select selected a section in such a way that its rz is greater than 5 cm and ry is greater than 3.5 cm so we selected the section uh, ismb 500 that has value of rz which is 202 which is greater than 50 and ry of 30, 35.2 which is greater than 35 then uh, we uh, we know the drill from the analysis problem wherein we sort of found out first what is the buckling class of the cross section and then we found out the slenderness ratios and we knew we, we know which slenderness ratio to select the slenderness ratio that has a higher value sort of governs the design and therefore we selected the slenderness ratio about y axis which is 99.43 now for buckling about y axis the buckling class is b and therefore uh, we refer to the table that gives the data for buckling class b uh the value of yield stress is 250 therefore in this column we look for a value between 99 and 100 and we said that the value is going to be close to 118 because this is almost 100 this is 99.43 so once we have the value of fcd it's only a matter of multiplying with with the defective area to get the value of pd now by doing so we got a value so uh, the the effective area is uh, 1100 so by doing so the value that i i i was getting is 1298.7 kN okay now if we compare it with the value or with the actual load that is to be resisted the actual load that is to be resisted is 1600 kN so this is less than 1600 kN which means that this section that we chose is not adequate okay so does it mean that we messed up in the calculation somewhere so we followed the procedure correctly so does it mean that there is a calculation error or you know does it mean that oh in general what do you think is is you know is going on here why did we get a value that is less than the target actual load that the, or the actual load that we are targeting maybe was it oh, one slow one slow sorry please go on i was saying maybe 100 is a wrong assumption like we can assume the slenderness ratio to be like 80 exactly so you know that so that's where so we started an assumption that assumption gave us a number if that number is less than 1600 or less than the actual value uh, actually the load of uh, the value of actual load that we are targeting which means that our assumption needs to be corrected so we started with the value of 800 but maybe we should have started with the value 80 if you we are going to choose this section maybe then we could get a value that is greater than uh, six, uh, that is greater than 1600 but now we what do we do now now we've already solved everything and uh, we so if we still want to go ahead with the slenderness ratio of 100 perhaps what we could do is we could select a section that is that is slightly larger or that is slightly heavier than ismb 500 now i'll just quickly open up the steel table
setting my screen. So if you look at the seal table, we have ISMB 500 that has a value of uh, 3.52 RY and RX is 20.2. Now, for this, we have selected this value that is very close to the value that is required. If you go to the next section, it has a value of 3.73 and 22.2. So let us select a section that has these red eye, which are slightly greater than the values that are required. Bhargav, is it the same principle as when we're uh, preparing for a weaker, weaker structure and what we actually get because of imperfections? Like we always imagine the load to be worse or the stress to be worse than what it actually is, right? Uh, could you please repeat? We always imagine that the column isn't perfect, right? That's why we have the, that's why we always take a slightly larger, we always yes. prepare for the larger load. So this is where similar concept, right? Where, oh, I mean, obviously there's the assumption also. But here we're taking the radius slightly larger because we're imagining that uh, it'll we can't take a lower uh -huh. radius, right? That's why we're taking a larger radius. Yes, yes, we cannot take a low, uh, lower radius for sure because that would mean that you know we are just unnecessarily wasting our time in calculating because the required radius, the minimum required radius is 3.5. You for this particular slenderness ratio, so you cannot select anything that is less than 3.5. It is definitely going to fail. Okay, so if we sort of stick with this slenderness ratio, what we could do is we could select a slightly higher section. So let us say that we select ISMB 550. I'll just open the property side by side so that we can quickly note them. So ISMB 550 has an area of 132 centimeter square. that it is 13200 millimeter square. It has a total depth of 550. The width of flange is 190. Then the thickness, oh, we don't need this data, RZ and RY, it is 22.2. So this is 22.2, meaning that it is 20, or it is triple two mm. And RY is 3.73. This is 37.3. Uh, I think the buckling class would still remain the same. It is 550 divided by 190, which is 2.89. 89 is still greater than 1.2. Thickness of the flange. You can get the data from here. Thickness of the flange is 19.3. So this is the thickness of the flange. It is still less than 40 mm. The buckling class about z-axis is A. Buckling class about y-axis is B. Now let us find the slenderness ratios. This is the effective length about z-axis. And this value is triple two. So the slenderness ratio in this case is 22.52 and about y-axis this is 37.3. The slenderness ratio value is 
I had a question. Yeah. Um, if we after this uh, step after this slenderness uh, slenderness ratio step, we always consider uh, slenderness ratio about y axis. So why yes. are we? So do we need to calculate slenderness ratio for z axis and also check the buckling class on uh, above steps, or can we just skip that? If that's we already good. know that, we'll take okay. it. Okay, that's a good question. But we can decide on that only after looking at this lengthness ratios. Okay, because we have seen here that the effective length about z and y axis could be different. Okay, so now this is a very hypothetical situation. But just imagine that if I give you a lengthness ratio about z axis, which is say thousand, and a lengthness ratio of y axis, which is say uh, ten thousand. Because you know the for bending about z axis the support is extremely stiff, and for bending about y axis the support is extremely flexible. In that case, this value could be greater than this value. Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. Okay. So what I mean to say, say if this value is, uh, uh, let's give me more. Uh, did you understand my point? Yeah, got it. We can we can decide on which slenderness ratio is going to govern only after looking at these two numbers, because these two numbers are not going to be the same always. There there might be a case that this number is 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 much higher than this number. There might be a case where in this number is say ten thousand, and this number is say thousand. So in that case, you might get a number here that is greater than this number. So you can't say for sure. So up to coming up to this step, step is mandatory. Okay. So looking at now, looking at these two numbers, we can see that uh, you know this lengthness ratio would govern. So for buckling about y-axis, the buckling class is B. And K upon R about Y is 93.83. So we'll again go at this, go to this table, but this time uh, everything remains the same. We are going to look at the column with the yield stress of 
So uh, as I was saying, now we look at this table with a column of with a column under 250 and between 1900. Why are you sharing screen? I think after you got disconnected, your screen has been sharing. Can you see my screen now? Now we can. Yeah. Okay. So. Uh, For the yield stress of 250, we are going to look at the slender stress between 90 and 100, but with slender stress value of 93.83. Now we need this, we need the FCD corresponding to this. So we'll do linear interpolation, and the value that we get is 127.87 megapascals. Now the last step is uh, finding out the design action load. This is AE times FCD that we have found out. So this. Um, this is equal to AE, which is which we found here. This is one three two double zero. Multiplied by one twenty seven point. Can someone give me a number quickly? One six eight. 0.91 kilonewtons. 7.91 kilonewtons. Now you see this value is greater than 1600 kilonewtons, which means that our assumption is correct and the section that we have selected is also correct. So in case, you know, this is from an understanding point of view, but in case in exam, you sort of select a section that gives a value that is, you know, slightly lesser than the value that we are targeting. Don't worry about it. You need not do this calculation all over again. You could just say that select ISMB 550. If, if you, for example, if you started with 500 and you ended up with a value that is lesser than 1600, do not worry about it. You know, I, I will understand that you have understood the procedure. Just at the end, write that, you know, ISMB 500 seems to be inadequate, so provide ISMB 550. That's all you need to do. But this does not mean that you can do it when your calculations go wrong. Okay, so if you start with ISMB 550 and your calculations go wrong and then you select ISMB 550 might not be adequate, so select ISMB 600. That, that will not make any sense. If all the calculations are correct, it's only about selecting the section, then I'll understand and I'll still give you marks. Okay. I think I found another error in the previous selection of ours. Okay, uh, because perfect. we had assumed uh, the value close to 117, but we were supposed to take a value between 118 and 134. So 118 and 134, that is correct. OK, so we should have that. That's correct. Because when I calculated it, the value for uh, FCD had come out to be 118.9 something. Right, right. So this value, thanks for pointing it out. This value, instead of selecting 117, we should have selected is 119 because we are in between 118 and 134. So this value had to be greater than 118. So it, it, should, it should have been 119. Accordingly, this should have been 119, and this value would be somewhere close to 1300. Thank you for pointing that out. Please make that correction in your calculation. So any questions here? No questions. Perfect. I think we are good to go for the quiz. So just give me a moment to set I it up. I have a doubt, but not regarding this. Yeah, please go on. Yeah, I was confused. Like, how are we supposed to calculate the thickness of the base plate? 